The Karoo Desert stretches out across a third of South Africa's land area. Dolerite mountains like these separate the land into different habitats, harboring the richest diversity of any desert in the world. Here are world-class astronomy projects and a farming industry that exports food around the world, producing 3.4 million sheep a year. Seven million people rely on this desert for their daily existence. Most of the Karoo is extremely dry, with about seven to 10 inches of rain per year. Despite a short-lived summer rainstorm like this one, all the water in the Karoo comes from wells drilled into the ground and pumped up to the surface using age-old windmills harking back to an older, slower time. Farmers, scientists, and communities are worried that without access to clean water like this from wells, this vast area will be economically devastated. The Karoo is the name of this desert, but it is also the name of a shale deposit called the Karoo Basin. This basin stretches almost across the whole country of South Africa. Looked on as a curse for some and a blessing for others, locked into the Karoo Basin may be as much as 400 trillion cubic feet of shale gas, the fifth largest deposit of its kind in the whole world. Since the moratorium on natural gas exploration was lifted in 2012, companies like Royal Dutch Shell and others are lining up at South Africa's door, waiting for the green light to explore for what the government hopes will be a clean and abundant source of energy that brings jobs and development. The biggest issue that we have, or one of the, the issues that we have with the long-term cost of fracking is that the government and the oil and gas industry are very keen to promote it on the basis that it brings prosperity. And I question what is this thing, prosperity, that they're talking about? Because if they're talking about short-term gains for a few global companies and a government that happens to be ruling at the moment, and that is what they call prosperity, and that prosperity is at the cost of the prosperity of future generations then it's not worth it. Deal and his group are part of a growing resistance to natural gas production here that is prepared to do whatever it takes to prevent exploration and extraction of the Karoo gas deposit. The problem of, of exploring is, is simply that there's never been a precedent of the Department of Minerals ever stopping the conversion of an exploration license into full-scale production. Natural gas production in shale formations consists of essentially three stages. Drilling is done with huge rigs. The rig drills many wells from one pad using directional drilling techniques to fan out the wells like an octopus from the drill pad as much as 10 kilometers away in any direction. Once the drilling is complete, the rig is taken away and service trucks bring millions of liters of water and chemicals to the site where they are mixed and injected under great pressure in a process called hydraulic fracturing or fracking. At roughly 4,000 feet deep, the pipes have holes where the extreme pressure drives the fluid into the shale and cracks it, releasing the methane gas and other chemicals. Once the wells from the pad have been fracked, some 20 to 80 percent of the millions of liters of polluted water mixed with fracking fluids return up the well shaft to the surface, where the toxic liquid must be disposed of often in settling ponds next to the drill pad like this, where the liquids and volatile compounds can evaporate into the air. For the eight to 30 year life of the well, trucks must take away the polluted waste mixture that emerges with the gas. This waste can be 50% of everything coming up the well, mostly volatile organic compounds. The potential problems with this process are not just relegated to the fracking of the well, as many believe, but every aspect of production. The most clear danger is when fracking fluids and trapped gas leak out the sides of the well shaft into the water table through cracked well casings. Also, the chemicals are mixed on the surface and stored in large ponds that must be very carefully insulated from leakage, which is sometimes not done. Once the well is drilled, fracked, and in production, it can still be invisibly polluting. As much as 9% of the methane and compounds like benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylenes may leak out of the well. Most shale basins are even, flat, and maintain a fairly regular deep layer continuity, 
with few hard rock intrusions that allow water to move upward. The Karoo is different. Dr. Gerrit von Tonder from the University of the Free State supported natural gas extraction until he embarked on a study of the geology of this desert. He fears that vertical pathways made by lava flows called dolerite dikes, shown here in black, will allow fracking fluids and other waste to rise and pollute the water table. Dolerite, it was a warm, warm lava that infiltrates the cold sedimentary rock and of course, when you get cooling, you will get these cracks along the dolerite. And it's full of cracks, it's full of preference of pathways. So our problem is at least 10 times, 100 times bigger uh, in shales like the United States where you don't find dolerites or this lava intrusions. The water deep in the Karoo is under such high pressure that it is always looking for these preferred flow paths. And Von Tonder believes that eventually the water will even find its way up the gas wells after they are closed with cement. They say they close the ball with the good cement, but all the cement will crack, will deteriorate with time. What will happen after 50 to 100 years after abandonment of a well? All the wells will leak. This is a given. The latest science from the gas fields of America seems to support his conclusions. According to this University of Colorado study, and another from Cornell University, wells are leaking gas and other chemicals into the air at a rate about three times what the industry concedes. The government suggests that hundreds of thousands of jobs will be created, helping offset the 24% unemployment in the country. Small-scale farmers like Raymond Klassen believe that this is short-sighted. It is thinking like this that scientists have been trying to instill in government and public health organizations with oversight over drilling activities. So what is in the fracking mixture? No one knows for sure, and most companies aren't telling. Dr. Theo Colburn's group, the Endocrine Disruption Exchange, has worked to uncover a list of 246 products used by the natural gas industry. One of our staff set out to systematically set up a database in order to look at the long list of chemicals that we had at hand. Of those products that had health effects, 14% had 1 to 3 effects, and 86% had 4 to 14 effects. And what surprised us was to find that 43% of the products on our list contain endocrine disruptors, chemicals that can interfere with the development of individuals before they are born and cause irreversible lifetime changes in their health later in life. But there are other problems with natural gas development in the Karoo other than pollution. South Africa is home to the largest optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, the Southern African Large Telescope. According to this government map, it sits right inside one of the drilling areas for natural gas. The main telescope is owned by universities in the USA, UK, Germany, and 12 other countries. There is a real fear that opening up the area to natural gas development will impede the country's astronomy program and prevent scientific development while hampering investment in the square kilometer array. With 3,000 radio telescope dishes arranged across the subcontinent, the square kilometer array will be the largest telescope ever made. South Africa won the project over Australia in 2012, and construction has begun at its base here in the Karoo. Thirteen countries and 100 organizations have teamed together to build it, and many worry that large-scale natural gas extraction around the site may cause problems. And fracking can hurt the SKA if it's too close to it. Von Tonder believes that the strong radio signals generated by drilling through the hard, iron-like dolerite will create interference. It's traveling quicker than 6,000 meters per second. So even if you drill 200 kilometers away, it will reach the SKA.
But others suggest that the futures of the Square Kilometer Array and the Southern African Large Telescope are safe because the government realizes its significance and will not allow gas companies to endanger the projects. The government is, uh, has already set up something called the Astronomy Geographic Advantage Bill, which protects the observatory sites from any sort of uh, negative influences, be it mining, um, fracking, all of that. The Sunday Times newspaper reports that the ruling ANC is invested in Shell through a trust and opposition parties contend that the fracking argument is clouded by this relationship. Despite low wages driving them into the streets in protest, people in the Karoo, like Berrydale community leader Henry Michaels, are not willing to trade their long-term future for short-term gain. No, 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 it's, it's like a scheme, you see. It will impact our environment and also it will impact our underground water resources. Raymond Klassen is a Khoisan, a member of the original group of people that have inhabited the Karoo for millennia. He also feels that the high cost of drilling is simply not worth it. So, that can be a lot of money for the land and pump. It can be a lot of money for the But what from the future? What will happen to our land? What will happen to our world? So, the whole world. So, I think that this that that going to be a very good thing. This is Jeffrey Barbie reporting from the Karoo Desert for Alliance Earth.